how to ride the subway. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Sorry if my voice sounds really weird. It's because I recently got the flu. I seriously don't think I've had the flu since I was in elementary or middle school. I don't remember the last time I got the flu and it like knocked me out and that's why my voice is a little weird, but I'm on the up and up so not contagious anymore hopefully but today I wanted to film a video that has been requested and that I've been meaning to film before I leave New York and that is how to ride the subway so the subway is our transit system it's really convenient it's awesome some people might complain because there's train traffic and there's homeless people that sleep on it sometimes and it smells or it's crowded but honestly it's really convenient and it's really helpful because you don't have to have a car you don't have to worry about traffic or parking which is which are major things that I feel like people in California worry about because how long is it going to really take me to get from point A to point B and will I need to find parking, do I need to pay for parking, should I just take an Uber? The subway is so convenient and I think that's one thing I love about New York and one thing I'll definitely miss. But the subway is also tricky and especially if you're not from here, if you're just visiting, there's a lot of few tips that I feel like will be helpful for you guys before you visit or before you move here. So let's get started. First I want to cover how the subway actually works. So there's different lines, some of them have numbers like the 1, 2, 3, some of them have letters like the NQR, and they also have colors, although I realize most people don't say, I'm going to ride the yellow line, most people just mention the numbers or the letters. And the numbers and letters are all different and they go to different areas, and the best way I think is to understand the subway is to use the map. I'll talk about apps later, but here's a sample map and it just shows you the different lines and where they go. You also have to think about the concept of uptown versus downtown because when you're going on a subway, sometimes it says uptown or it says downtown. And you need to know what that means because if you go the wrong direction, then you will not be going to where you want to go. And some places I know have endpoints and the subway is a little easier if you just know uptown and downtown, or I guess if you know that Brooklyn is downtown and the Bronx is uptown. So basically, if you're going north on the map, you're going uptown. If you're going south on the map, you're going downtown. Sometimes it's a little difficult because there's like L-shaped lines, but usually Google Maps will tell you, but if not, just ask someone or just get on a subway and see the next stop and see if you're going the right direction. The other important concept to know are express versus local stops. So express trains are express. They skip the local stops. For example, on the 456, 86th Street is an express stop. So if you get on a 4 or 5, which are express trains, it'll go from 86 to 59, skipping 77, 68, etc. And sometimes if you don't know which subway you're getting on and you think it's a local or you think it's an express, the worst thing is, think, I think if you think it's a local and it's actually an express, it's gonna, it might skip your stop, and then you'll have to wait until the next stop to get back on and go uptown or downtown. So make sure you know which subway lines are express and which ones are local. Also on the weekends, they might run local or they might run express if there's train traffic or if there's construction. So just pay attention to the subway app. Express apps are important and helpful if you want to get somewhere faster and you don't want to wait for them to stop at every stop. Express stops sometimes are more crowded, but during the commute, commute times, it's really helpful. So next I want to talk about a few subway apps that are really vital. First of all, Google Maps. It's going to be your best friend. Uh, you can use Apple Maps. They recently have transit information, but everyone here just uses Google Maps. It's pretty reliable. It knows, for the most part, when there are delays or when there are subway changes. So, for example, if a line isn't going the way that you thought it was. And it also is helpful because it just tells you where to walk to, where to get on, and where to go. I think it recently started telling you uptown or downtown, but again, that's a concept that you should just know. So it'll tell you, to get from point A to point B, you take this line, you get off at this stop. It even tells you what exit to take, because when you exit a subway, there are multiple exits, and if you want to be the most efficient possible, you want to exit the closest one to where you're going. Some exits are even multiple streets long, so you might end up two streets higher or lower than you wanted. So definitely use Google Maps. Even I rely on Google Maps pretty heavily when I'm in areas I don't, I don't know. The next is the New York City subway app. And this is the app that has the map, which you can use in the subway when you don't have any reception, so that's important. It also tells you the delays, it tells you the subway changes, and these are important things to know, especially if you want to double check to make sure your subway is going the, where you want to go. For people like me who commute daily, sometimes I check if there's delays. I even have these little bell notifications that tell me in the morning if a subway is delayed, and since I have two subways I can technically take to work, I might take the other one if the other one's delayed. 
if you want to make sure you're not going to be late the next day or in the morning when you're going somewhere, you can check if it's skipping your stop, etc. Keep in mind that the weekends are, and at nighttime is usually when they do the most subway construction and that's when things are usually out of whack, especially if you're trying to go out of Manhattan or into Manhattan. Sometimes Brooklyn and Queens bound trains are just either not running or there's only one train running or it's just all messed up. So make sure you pay attention. Another really helpful app is the subway time app. And this is helpful to know when the subway is actually coming. It's pretty accurate and I will say though sometimes if a subway is really delayed it won't know right away and it might say it's coming even though it's not. But for the most part it's real time and what makes this really clutch is when you're trying to jump from one train to another and you want to know what time that, tra that next train is coming to the station then you can see. For example if I'm taking the 456 the Grand Central and I want to know when the next 7 train is coming I can check to see on the subway time app and then I know if I have to run or if I can relax or if I'm going to make it or not and that can also help you with your commute time or with your travel time to see if you're going to be on time somewhere. This is just in general helpful knowing, especially if you look and there's two subways you can take. One's not going to be here for another 15 minutes and the other one's coming in five. You can take the five minute one. All right, let's talk about the Metro card. The Metro card is how you pay to get onto the subway. I've talked about this in other videos before, but you can either get a paper ride, a seven day unlimited, or a 30 day unlimited. There's also the Easy Pay Metro card, which is something I've also mentioned in previous videos that pre fills your subway card for you, which I think is awesome. It's great, especially if you're commuting. You don't have to ever stand in line at those kiosks to fill in your subway card. It just deducts from your credit card monthly if you're doing the monthly, or if it's paper ride every time you go below a certain amount. But my tip is if you're traveling here, make sure you calculate exactly how many times you're using the subway. What I do is I just do 275 times how many times I think I'm going to ride the subway or if my family's visiting, how many times they'll be riding the subway. And then I multiply that by 275 and I see how much it is. If it's more than what you're spending for the 7 day unlimited, just get the unlimited. Then you don't have to worry about anything and you're saving money. The 7 day unlimited right now is $33 and the 30 day unlimited right now is $127. So just look up the prices online and to calculate to see if it's worth it for you. If you live here and you're commuting daily to work, it's most likely that you're it's worth it for you to get the 30 day unlimited because you're using the subway at least twice Monday through Friday and then you're going to use it on weekends. Please keep in mind that some kiosks are cash only or credit card only. It's really annoying. Be prepared for both. And sometimes there's going to be long lines and the people at the desks if there even is someone there, aren't very helpful. So I would just try to ask someone or see how to use the kiosk beforehand because it takes a little getting used to. If you really want to be accurate, there's a way to do it so that you can calculate exactly how much you'll be spending so you don't waste any money. It also costs a dollar for each new subway card. If you swipe once at the turnstile, you have to wait about 15 minutes to swipe again because they don't want you, people to abuse the unlimited. This stinks if, for example, you swipe in and you realize that you're going uptown, but in order to get to downtown, you have to come back out of the subway. That is another thing to note is that some subways, you can't transfer from uptown to downtown on the same subway track. You'd actually have to exit and re-enter, which means you'd have to re-swipe. That's definitely happened to us many times, and you have to you have to basically wait 15 minutes. For the Paper Ride Metro card, it'll let you swipe it in for multiple people because you're still paying per ride, per person, so it doesn't matter as much. You also get free transfers if you take if you transfer from a bus to a subway or a subway to a bus within two hours. So that's another thing to keep in mind if you want to save money if you're paying per ride. All right, I'm going to show you guys how to buy a Metro card. Select the language, and then you can select Metro card because that's the type that you want. You can refill your card if you already have one, or you can get a new card for a dollar. Adding value means that you're adding the exact amount that you want, so you can calculate how much money you're going to use for the subway card and then just press enter. Adding time is for the unlimited, so you either have the seven day or the 30 day unlimited. And if you select that, you can also pay by credit card. After you put in all your information, it'll charge it, and then the Metro card will spit out, and then you can take it, and that's it. It's pretty easy. Okay, so now let's get into tips on how to actually ride the subway. So one tip is that it's gonna be crowded, and you basically have to push your way through if people are in your way. But if you're a tourist or you're new to New York, you don't want to get in someone's way because they can get quite angry sometimes. 
So first let's start for when the subway arrives. I usually like to stand on the platform pretty close to the yellow edge because when the subway comes you don't want people to get in front of you. Now it's hard to sort of gauge where the subway car doors are going to open but if you ride the subway several times you sort of eventually know where it comes. And make sure you don't stand right in front of the doors because people still need to exit the subway. So usually when the when the subway comes you stand on the sides and there's two there's two lines essentially, one that's going on the right side of the door and one that's going on the left side of the door. When the doors open, people will exit. Don't get in their way. Wait until they exit completely and then start going in. There's going to be those annoying people who are clueless or they're just really annoying and they're going to push through and try to block people who are coming out. But that's really rude. That's really looked down upon. So wait till everyone exits and then enter in. I try to go straight for the middle because that's where you will not get in people's way the most. Most people that are clueless or they're tourists, they stand right in the middle near the door. The problem is that people will constantly be coming in and out and you're going to get in their way. So what I like to do and what most people want people to do, especially during commute hours, is to go towards the middle so that way everyone can file in and you can make the most of your space and that way people can come in and out easily. If you're getting off at the next stop, sure, stay near the door. But if you're at least staying on for several stops, I would just go towards the middle. You don't have to worry about being trapped because you can push your way through and say, excuse me. And even when, even as people are coming and starting to come in, the door still won't close yet. Another thing that I would say is that there, if you have a backpack, it's better to take the backpack off so that you're not banging into people behind you because they're going to get annoyed. And I know I've been annoyed from people banging in for to me because they have their backpack as well. So if you have a backpack, just take it off and leave it at your feet. When exiting the subway, it's good to wait for the subway to come to a complete stop and then get up. There's people that try to get up beforehand and they always fall because the subway will jerk sometimes when it stops or you're just getting in people's way too early. So usually I wait until it stops. I, then I get up and I exit and usually people in front of you or near you are also exiting you can just follow them around follow them through or if you're the only one exiting just push your way through and say excuse me that also being said there are people who ride the subway without touching on any poles I don't know how they do it but don't try to be a hero don't try to look like you know what you're doing because I know that the subways there's bends there's jerks there's sun stops it's better to always hold on to the subway pole because you never know when you might go flying and that would not be good and very embarrassing. A few other tips are that the front end of the train are usually the least crowded cars because most people enter from the middle. So if you really want somewhere that's not that crowded, you could walk all the way to the front or to the end. And also be aware of the empty subway car. Sometimes you think it's too good to be true, and it usually is. Either it means that there's no AC, or there's a homeless person that smells, or there's some weird thing going on. Maybe some person is annoying or they're shouting or something. So. Usually, if you can, I would avoid those cars. Lastly, I want to talk about how to swipe your card at the turnstile. There's two types of turnstiles. There's the more traditional one, like this one, where you just swipe and you go through. Or there's these ones that are more like cages and they turn, and those are the older style ones. Honestly, if you can avoid those, I would just avoid them because they're confusing and because people can come in and out. And sometimes I've had it where people have swiped and then the person goes through and then they waste your swipe. Or you swipe and then sometimes or sometimes people swipe and they go in the wrong way. Just watch someone else do it beforehand, that way you don't get confused because you have to go in the right turn style, otherwise it only has one turn and if you go too early then you'll waste your turn. But be sure to swipe at a steady pace, not too fast, not too slow, because then it's not going to let you through. And you, you know when you swiped it correctly because it'll say, it'll say go, but it'll also have a certain sound, a click sound that will let you turn because it's nothing's more embarrassing than swiping and thinking you're fine and going and being stuck at the turnstile. If it says insufficient fare, you probably need to add more money. If it says you swipe too fast, try to swipe slower. Sometimes it knows that you swipe too early, like I said with the unlimited, and then it'll just won't let you go through. So if you have any questions, you can always ask the people that work there at the station if there is someone. Um, honestly, there's been times when my parents, I went through, everyone's gone through and one person got stuck, I just opened the emergency exit for them. The emergency exit usually does not make any noise and they usually don't care because if you're having problems then it's just a thing that happens so don't worry about that. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video about how to ride the subway. If you have any questions, comment below. Let me know if there's anything I missed, any tips that you would want other people to know about. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.